Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I'm reviewing a pen from a relatively new pen brand on the market. That brand is Scrivener. Scrivener is a London-based company. They were formed in 2019 by a couple of uh, people who saw a little hole in the market for luxury uh, design products at a very at an affordable price, and so they formed a Scrivener. Uh, and it was mainly started. Uh, being sold online, uh, and all the items are designed in the UK, uh, engineered in Germany according to the website, and manufactured in China. Um, they say they've sold over half a million pens, and they're now available in over 900 Office Depot stores in the US, uh, which means they've got some great physical uh, sort of uh, distribution as well as the online stuff through their website and places like Amazon. So. I've got two pens, well, three pens, but two different models to show you today from Scrivener. And uh, I'm going to talk about both of those, size comparisons, all that kind of stuff, writing sample, give a couple of thoughts about things, and then uh, we'll wrap it up. So this is the box it comes in, lovely, simple black cardboard um, covered box here. Lift the lid off, and here is the first of the pens. This is the EDC, and this is the green finish. Um, I have two of these, so I have the green and I have the blue here, which I think is an absolutely stunning blue, but I inked up the green because I had a green ink I wanted to put in it, um, which is nice. Take the pen out of the little pen mattress there. You lift up the lid as it suggests, and you get a couple of uh, ink cartridges in a nice plus, uh, paper envelope, some uh, information and filling information and all that kind of stuff, and then a little warranty card in the bottom. So, top of the pen, the Scrivener logo there, the S for Scrivener, uh, in, sort of embossed or stamped and then filled in with black. The cap is cylindrical, down to this cap band, which tapers slightly and has the logo once again and Scrivener. The, cap, the clip is on a clip band, which is built in here, and it's flexible, but very, very usable. I have no problem with this in pen cases and pockets and things like that. There's a nice stamping on the clip here, the light might just let us see, which I think is a lovely art deco kind of feel to it. The barrel of the pen after that little step down is straight until we get the postings reds and then a little end, flat end there. So the cap unscrews in one and a half turns uh, and reveals the, the the cap threads, which are not sharp, not even really that noticeable under the fingers, a little flared section, uh, and then a number five Schmidt nib. Now, Scrivener seem to sell these mostly in medium and fine, but this is the Schmidt uh, FH241 nib, um, which uh, is available in extra fine, fine, medium, and broad, not through Scrivener, but through other retailers. So if, if you wanted to get one of these pens and put a broad on it, that is more than capable. So you screw that cap on the end there, and uh, well, this one doesn't quite line up. I could probably get it to line up by repositioning the, the nib. Um, it doesn't bother me uh, too much, really. Um, so it's it's fine, it's a good length, uh, and it makes for a lovely EDC pen. As I say, this is the EDC model, um, and uh, in comparison to something like the Kaweco Sport, it's a little bit longer, particularly when it's uh, unposted, well, uncapped, I should say, um, but it's a nice sort of size. To me, this pen feels like an anodized aluminium, but there's a nice little bit of weight uh, to it as well. So uh, I might be wrong there, but that's that's the way this pen sort of feels to me, or that's at least the style of finish that it is. It is a standard international cartridge converter, both provided. Bit of noise on those, on those threads, metal on metal, um, and you reveal a Scrivener branded uh, international converter there, or Scrivener at least uh, labeled. Um, now, what's really nice about this is that as an EDC pen, this is going to go in your purse or in your bag or in your pocket, things like that. You want it to be secure. Firstly, those threads for capping the pen, very, very secure. But they've added in a couple of extra safe measures just to stop, you know, things like the converter coming loose, for instance. It is a threaded converter. So it's going to stay nice and secure in that section. It's not going to fall out if it's being carried around, particularly when it's carried around nib up and convert it down. That's just, you know, the, the physics of it. So they've secured it in there. Simple things like this that make this pen nice. It's got a nice German made nib on it. It's got a good converter, threaded converter. It posts well, it, you know, it caps well, all of those kinds of things. Nice details for an EDC style pen. So now I'm going to take a second to talk about this pen. This is the Scrivener Classic. This is the other model I was sent. So I'm going to talk about the quick, quickly talk about the parts and features, and we'll do some size comparisons and writing samples and all of that kind of stuff. 
So we start with the logo this time under a sort of a plastic dome. We have gold trim on this pen uh, and they say it is like um, gold plated. So that's a claim on the website. Um, I don't, I can't test the science of that. Uh, the cap is straight until we get to this cap band, which once again says Scrivener and the logo. Um, and then the barrel continues along and then tapers to these two gold rings and end cap there. It is a snap cap. And the snap to post to cap it is very nice. Um, it's got a nice feel to it as well. And we get a little uh, couple of gold rings around this tapered section and then a gold colored Schmidt number five nib there. And they say the same thing with the F for fine and then Schmidt Iridium point. Um, and both have plastic feeds. This is also a standard international cartridge converter pen and the cart converter was provided. I've just decided to use one of these ink cartridges. Uh, they sell these ink cartridges in black and blue. Uh, and uh, I put a blue one in here and it's very nice. And the cartridges are made in England or made in the UK. Uh, and I will just say that the ink feels familiar. It's, it's good. Um, okay, so then you, and that's the pen. It's a slim pen. It's got a decent length. It's an elegant pen. It's sort of a classic design. It's on the smaller side, um, but yeah, this is the classic. So let's now look at a size comparison. For this portion of the video, I've just decided to use the blue pen just to give it a bit more time so you can actually see that beautiful blue. It's really, really lovely. Um, so you can see in comparison here to a Lamy Safari, and this is one of my Lamy Safaris. I've taken elements from other Safaris and sort of uh, put it together because I was bored, uh, but that's a standard size Lamy Safari. The Classic is slightly shorter, just by a couple of millimeters. And of course the EDC is shorter. It's designed to be a pocket pen. The Kaveco Sport here, you know, shows it's a it's a smaller pen, uh, but comes out to be a fairly decent size when it's, uh, when it's all uh, posted. Uncapped, you see the Safari is still considerably longer, but the EDC and the Classic are actually much closer in length uh, here. And then posted, it's a smaller pen, but it's an okay size in the hand. I'll show that in just a bit. But it is much smaller than both the Lamy Safari and the Scrivener Classic here. We'll start with the dimensions here for the EDC model. When it's capped, it's 120 millimeters. So it is on the smaller side, but it is a designed to be a everyday carry pocket pen. Unposted, it is 117. Now, that is a small pen, but it fits in the hand enough that you can really use this, for particularly for like quick note taking. If you're out on the road and you're jotting a phone number down or putting ticking something off a to-do list, this would be absolutely fine. Uh, and then when it's posted, it's 139, which makes it a nice length pen in the hand. The section in the middle there is about nine millimeters. So it's on the slimmer side. And if you hold it slightly back on those threads, they're not sharp, as I said. The weight of the pen is 29 grams, 15 in the body and 14 in the cap. And a lot of the weight of the cap is up at this end. Now, this is a smaller pen. It's not, you know, when it's like a, a, a wand when it's posted. So you do carry the weight of the pen on the webbing, but it is noticeable, but very, very usable. Um, the balance when it is un uh, posted, it's quite light at 15 grams uh, and it's perfectly fine. Although you do start to get these threads rubbing on the webbing of your hand. So once again, probably not for long writing sessions. And now the Classic. The Classic is 140 millimeters when it is posted. So it's a fairly standard length pen. It's 121 when it is unposted, which makes it actually slightly longer than the EDC when it is posted. That's cap, sorry. Um, it's got a nice weight as well, I will say that. Posted, it's 157. So it's it's okay length, it's quite it's quite a good length, um, but with a nine millimeter section, um, and a little step down there on the barrel, smaller nib, and then a lot of the weight of the pen in the back here, it does feel slightly off balance to me. The pen weighs 31 grams, 17 in the body and 14 in the cap. So you are putting a lot of weight and like the vast majority of that cap's weight um, is up there in the in the top of the pen. It's it's like the balance point is like around here, which is behind where the pen actually posts. So it is it is back heavy. Um, but a nice weight in the hand. And as I said, I could I would happily write with this unposted, particularly for once again for shorter writing sessions. Um, and it's actually I think got quite an elegant, nice, slim form here uh, when it's in this 
format. Let's do a writing sample now, and I'll start with the uh, Scrivener. E, D, C. Uh, and this is a steel. Number five, Schmidt. So German-made nib. Uh, and this is a fine. The ink I have in this is a collabor collaboration between Van Diemen ink uh, and pulp addiction which is a retailer uh, in australia they released four inks um, by van diemen's ink uh, just recently uh, and this is emerald and i think this is a absolutely smashing ink it's really beautiful uh, and it works really nicely with this pen i think it's actually having a slightly darker ink color to the pen body color i think it works very very nicely let's do this writing sample Okay, so I wouldn't say it's overly smooth, but what I will say is it is incredibly consistent and it's really only feedback. It's not scratchy. Um, it's a little scr that was a little scratchy just on, on that stroke angle there. Um, but it's, it, it writes nicely and, you know, I mean, it writes fairly wet, particularly for, a, you know, a Schmidt fine nib. Uh, let's do some quick writing. absolutely illegible but no problems keeping up here whatsoever it is a very nicely tuned pen a little bit of feedback but nice reverse writing it's possible but i think it dries out and it's very very fine and it is a fairly stiff nib you're not really going to get a whole lot of line variation out of it you're just putting down a bit more ink so that's the edc with the uh, schmidt uh, number five fine nib and that's the same as I have here on the classic um, so this is the Scrivener classic with a steel number five Schmidt fine nib the ink in this is uh, the Scrivener blue ink cartridge it's actually quite a nice blue um, and you know this pen's not as wet there's a little bit more feedback on this nib um, but it, it's it's still kind of smooth And it writes nicely and it writes consistently. It's one of the things I've liked about these, both of these pens and, uh, and the blue EDC model here when I had that inked up before as well. They are consistent and they're reliable. They write. Uh, and that, and that's, that's really great. Quick writing. Keeps up all of that kind of stuff. And it performs pretty much, you know, the same as the, uh, as the, find there on the EDC. They are the same nib um, and that's what they use and they and they use that for a reason. So consistent writers, fairly, I would say on the wetter side, the Scrivener blue ink there, quite nice, a nice vibrant royal blue. Um, very, very nice. So that was the writing sample. Let's now talk about some pros and cons. Now quickly before we get into pros and cons, I want to quickly just cover the price point for these pens. Now the Classic is slightly cheaper and I'm going to first with the US prices at $47.99. Um, so it's a fairly affordable pen really uh, in comparison to a lot of other pens that is. The EDC models range from $51.99 to $54.99 depending on the version you get. Sort of like the more chrome versions, things like that tend to just be a little bit more expensive. Now that rounds out for the EDC to around 81 Australian dollars. So that puts it into a price point above things like the Safaris and the Ecos and the Kaweco Sports and all those kinds of things. For a metal Chinese made fountain pen, a lot of people, I've seen things online about this brand and a couple of others recently, 
people complaining about pens being made in, you know, that these are pens made in China and all those kinds of things. Well, yeah, they are. A lot of things are made in China. A lot of big luxury brands products are made in China. Um, and it doesn't mean that the pen is, I have done, I've, I've looked and I've read and I haven't found anything that is these pen models just being a generic pen model branded by Scrivener. I, th I think these are made for Scrivener, directly for Scrivener, designed possibly by Scrivener. That's, that's what the website suggests and that's what my research tends to suggest. I may be wrong. If, the, if that's not the case, please leave that in the comments below. I'm really keen to know more. But to me, this is a unique pen design for Scrivener made in China. Tons of brands do it. So what are you paying for? You're paying for a German Schmidt made nib and the Schmidt nibs are excellent. You know, lots of pen brands using Schmidt nibs and we love them. Um, you know, Schmidt, Bock and Jovo were kind of like the main three nib makers that sort of work in that way. Schmidt is fine. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. It has a good converter. It has a threaded converter and it has a robust well-built design. So that's what you're paying for. Now, is that worth the 81 Australian dollars or 50 US, 50 to 55 US dollars? Well, that is up to you. I think for me, the EDC model is a really interesting pen. It's a pen I really enjoy. Uh, and it's a pen that I think, given its price point, maybe on the, but once you convert into Australian dollars, maybe slightly on the higher price point, but it is a smaller pen brand and you will pay more for pens of lesser quality from other brands. Just because it's made in China, doesn't mean anything. These are well-made pens with really good components. As I said, German Schmidt made nib, good converter, all that kind of stuff. Okay, that's the end of that bit. Let's talk about some pros and cons. We'll start with the classic for the pros and cons. The cons. Okay, um, there is a little bit of feedback on this nib. That's just the way that is. You know, like it's smooth, it writes well, it writes consistently, but there is a bit of feedback. The other issue I have with this pen, and it's got or two issues that sort of link together. First is that when it's it's a smaller pen, it's got a slim section, it's got a smaller profile. That's not going to be to everyone's taste. And then when it's posted, it is quite back heavy. So I would tend to use this unposted, which may make it too small for some people. But the pros, um, I actually quite like the fact this slim profile and this sort of classic design. It's elegant, it's clean. The black and gold, very classy, very traditional. Little Art Deco references, like with the, you know, the lines down the cap, things like that. I quite like that. I quite like the logo. There's lots I like, and as I said, comes with a converter, good nib, all that kind of stuff. The other thing I really like about this pen is the weight in the hand. It feels substantial. It feels nice. It's got a feeling of luxury in the hand. That lacquered brass feels nice. It's good. I enjoy that a lot. Let's now talk about some pros and cons for the EDC. Now, I only have sort of two semi-cons here. First is that uh, when it is posted, you do you can feel the weight of the end of the cap here in your hand. I tend to prefer the weight of a pen leading down to the nib. Um, and you can see that the, it's hard to show on this angle, but the weight of the pen, the balance is there-ish. So that's right here where you're holding it, as opposed to leading down towards the nib, which is what I pre personally prefer. But that's my personal taste. Um, it's it's a good size in the hand and you don't really feel that and you can easily write with this uh, posted, not a worry. The other thing I concern I have uh, is that uh, because it is an anodized material or, you know, a coated material, you might get some wear and tear. Now it is an EDC pen, it is designed to be carried, but you might get some wear and tear, particularly on things like these threads on the end, um, where after a while, like, that might start to wear. But really, you know, like, they've done things like, on the top here, they've got a chrome ring. They've got a chrome ring on the cap, which are points that tend to get a little bit of wear. They don't have one on this end, but you don't see that when you're writing. So that's just when you're carrying it. So that could be an issue. But there's so many pros with this pen. So I'm going to start with the nib. I really like it. I really like it. It writes smooth. It writes quite wet. It's got a very nice fine line on it. I enjoy it a lot. 
Um, I love the fact that there's lots of colors and finishes. So there's something for everyone. There's like, I love that blue and that green is gorgeous, but that blue is just wildly beautiful. It's got great depth under the light as well. I really enjoy it. I quite like the size. It's not a small pocket pen. Like it's still substantial enough that you feel it in your pocket. I don't think you're going to lose this as easily as you would say a Kaweco Lilliput or something like that. And then when it is posted, it is a nice length in the hand. It's very comfortable. Uh, and you know, everything fits nicely in your hand and it's to where it should go. They've put some thought into this. It's also got a nice weight at uh, 29 grams. It's substantial enough in the hand. Um, I, I'm going to say that a pro of this pen is the price point um, and only strictly because I think there are other brands doing very similar things and charging a heck of a lot more. Um, whether this is a luxury branded and affordable price is up to you the buyer um but i like it and i would i this is a pen that at 80 dollars that i would absolutely uh buy um but the thing i love most about this and this little thing that i just enjoy is the security that they've built in with the converter threaded converter first step amazing and as i said these threads they lock down nicely they it's a very secure pen. So you can have security in the fact that you put this in your pocket. It's not going to leak. It's not going to bust open, stuff like that. I really like it. So these were pens from Scrivener. I hope you found this video interesting and useful. I've certainly enjoyed reviewing these, the Classic and the two EDC pen models. Um, so please like and subscribe. Hit the notifications button. Get in touch if there's anything you'd like to, if you've got questions or if there's you know, anything you'd like me to look at. Um, if you've got products you'd like me to look at, please get in touch. Uh, there are many ways you can support my channel um, and it's, it means that I can keep making these videos for you. A big, big thank you to Scrivener for sending these out. I, as I said, I really enjoyed them and uh, I think they're really nice pens. So uh, an interesting pen. So yeah, thank you for sending them out and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Enjoy your writing and uh, whatever you write with and I'll talk to you soon.